Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> A lot of people ask me several, several times about my background, where I come from, what I am, what I am today, how, how I, uh, uh, where I come from, where I belong to, who, where I get all my inspiration, where I get my guidance. Uh, there's, there's always somebody. I'll take you through. Uh, it was 86, 87. I was struggling like anything. I was, uh, mm, my business, I started my business in um, 83, 84. Very tough time. And I was shutting my business one after other. The only thing left for me was to go and work for somebody. And there was my father who was very insistent that he please must try to keep doing and start your own business and continue to be in your own business. And one after other, I shut down nine business. Nine business, one after other. And the one, uh, one point came when I was smoking 40, 40 cigarettes a day, drinking probably half bottle of whiskey, I don't know how to how to move my move forward my career. And I met through somebody called Richard Slavis. We call him Radhanath Maharaj. He's uh, I met him through one of the friends. And very unassuming personality and very magnetic. And I find he's he's telling me something which, which I must hear. And I started listening to him. And I find slowly, slowly, I'm com coming back to the track. And only a couple of things which he has really impact on my life, impact on my career, he definitely has some some superpower, something in him which inspired me. He also had a very strong guiding factor and the most important thing was the value-based life. To come out of the value-based life, ethic, ethics, value in my, in my life, my family was not that important. He made me make sure that the family is very, very important for you. And the society is very, very important for you. How you should give back to your society. You know, like uh, I was talking to him this morning and uh, one thing he said, in Bombay, the four million people are on the street. They were probably half of their body in the water. The thousands of girls, ladies were walking in the street for two days and not a chain was snatched. Nobody could had steal anybody. It was so peaceful. It was like all the ladies were safe. Any part of the world it is impossible. It's impossible. The young children came from the school and college, they were on the street, they were under the water, and asking him why such thing happen? And any, any part of the world, it never happen. People will steal, people will rob. Uh, anything can happen to the ladies. And he will tell you, he, he told me certain things, probably he will take you through why, why this thing happened. I won't take much of your time. I am not a great speaker. But I, I thought he was passing through uh, from Chicago, uh, he lived in Chicago. He has his father and his two brother has the uh, repair car, car body repair shop. Probably a lot of people work for him, and he chosen to be to get the way of his spiritual his spirituality. And I think he has gone through uh, Quran, uh, Quran Sharif, uh, Buddhism. He was he followed. Uh, 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 Jorastrian, 
couple of things. He's gone through all over the world, walking through from America to India. I, I, I've asked his father one day uh, and his mother how what what he was uh, when he was small. And beautiful thing he said he uh, he only meat when he was small. Uh, how he behaved uh, in his school. Beautiful thing. I think uh, uh, he had that. Uh, uh, he had when he, uh, probably when he was child. He has that. Uh, I think I'm going to invite him on on the stage. We just play. Thank you.
it is simply because of the pollution in people's hearts. Because there is greed and envy and no real concern for the welfare of others, we're creating all of this pollution. Unless we teach people, inspire people, educate people on the importance of cleansing the ecology of the mind, of the heart, that even if you clean up thoroughly every ocean, every river, all the air, and all the land, within a few years, it will all be polluted again. So we should work together. You are a politician, doing the work that needs to be done. There needs to be also educators to help people understand what is the real cause, the real cause of the problems of the world today. The world today we live in has made strides in progress in science and technology. When I was young, I'm only 54 years old, but in my life I've seen from little dial telephones to cellular phones. In Chicago, Illinois, where I was born and raised as a child, there were three television stations. <coughs> In my father's era, there was only radio. There was no such thing as television. We had one black and white television with three channels. And you had to get up and turn the dial every time you wanted to change those channels. <coughs> Today, there's televisions satellite with hundreds of stations, with memories and push buttons. When I was a child, we had record albums which held usually 12 songs, and it was about this big, and you needed all sorts of devices to play them. <coughs> Today, this big, you can hold thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. And it's self-operating. Medicine, strides of progress in medical technology. <clears throat> and when I was young, a computer took up the size of this room practically. No <coughs> the biggest corporations could afford them. Today, put, people are putting computers with, this, with more technology than that in their pockets. Amazing progress in technology. And this has all happened over the last 40 or 50 years. It's really incredible. But how has the quality of life improved. Alcoholism, drug addiction, suicide, mental illness and depression is more in the world today than ever before in history. <clears throat> suicide is a, is a thing that generally takes place not amongst the lower classes in the economic brackets, but the upper classes. In fact, the World Health Organization has declared that in the 21st century, the number one cause of suffering and death is not going to be AIDS or cancer or hepatitis or heart disease, but mental illness. Depression. People all over the world are taking antidepressants. <coughs> what is wrong? The mind is compared to a mirror. When you look in the mirror, you hope to see yourself. But when the mirror is covered, 
by all sorts of dust and debris. All you see is that dust and debris. And we forget who we really are. It is a common question, the most common question that is practically never asked. Who am I? Am I simply this body with the external designations that apply to this body? I'm a man or I'm a woman. Based on this conception, there's so much conflict between the sexes. Or am I a particular nationality? British or American or Russian or Pakistani or Indian? So much conflict on the basis of these designations? Am I young or old? That is changing. And even in the name of religion, am I Jewish or Christian or <clears throat> Hindu or Muslim? Conflict based on these designations. Due to egotism and misconception, we rarely ask, really, what is the essence of my life and who am I? body changes. The mind is always changing. But one thing remains steady and constant through all the transitions in life. And that is our consciousness. When I was a little baby and I see a photograph of myself as such, I say that is me. The body is different. The mind is different. But the person, the self, the consciousness is the same. What is the nature? What is the need of that consciousness? When we understand that, we understand the essence of our existence, and we see the commonality of the essence of our existence with all other living beings. And then there can be real unity. The American Indians they have a way of explaining things. They say within the heart or the mind of everyone are two dogs. There's a good dog and there is a bad dog. And the dog that you feed the most is going to be the strongest of the two. If you nourish the bad dog, he's going to feed the good dog. If you nourish the good dog, he's going to defeat the bad dog. This is the principle of every great scripture in the world. Good and evil. They're within all of us. And because they're within all of us, we create it within the world around us. How to nourish our positive side. How to conquer greed with charity. How to conquer hate with love, anger with forgiveness, apathy with compassion. These are essential questions. To nourish the positive <laughs> starve the negative is really advancement in civilization. Another example is an antenna. It's really incredible what we can't see around us today. <clears throat> but we were talking about these satellite TVs that can pick up hundreds of stations and all you have to do is just press a button and access it. As far as I can...